Jesus, without him how lost I would be. Without him I could be dying, and without him I'd be enslaved, and without him life would be hopeless, but with Jesus, thank God, I'm saved. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Please don't turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him how lost I would be. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Please don't turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him how lost I would be. All right, Acts chapter 1. I want to just preach a message, a reminder message. You know what one of those are? You know what a reminder message is? It's just something that we need to be reminded of that we don't forget. Okay, you all know my great uh, love and need of sticky notes. I can't live without a sticky note. Actually, I can't live without a sticky note because I forget everything. So um, probably within the next couple of years, I'll even forget who you are. So it'll be okay. Just put a sticky note on your forehead and I'll be good, all right? Uh, um, this is just one of those messages that's reminding us of our purpose as a believer. Our purpose as a Christian. When you trust Christ as your Savior, what then? Well, some people might look at it as though, okay, I've got my, uh, you've heard it said, eternal life insurance policy. I'm going to heaven. I know when I die, I'm going to heaven. So now I'm just going to live my life the way I want to and, and uh, just, just kind of whatever my own path is, I'm going to make those decisions and, and I'm going to live my life the best I can live it. Some people would say that. Some Christians would say that. They live that way. Others say, you know what? No, I am saved and so now I have a different purpose in life. Aren't you glad that God has a purpose for you? Some don't know what that purpose is yet. I remember as a teenager, always wondering, sitting in the teen department, listening to my youth pastor or going to camp or on mission trip. Uh, we want you to do God's will for your life. What's God's will for your life? Where are you going to go and what are you going to do? You need to surrender. Your life. And I always used to wonder, well, what's God's will for my life? I can't find it in Scripture. I have looked everywhere for Brad's will, his purpose, his path, his plan. I can't find it. As a Christian, we have a purpose in life. And I want to look at this passage here, Acts chapter 1. Let's read the first eight verses. The first eight verses, this is uh, uh, a record of our Lord's last meeting with His disciples while He was here on earth before He ascends up into heaven. He has this conversation. Look at chapter 1 and verse 1 of Acts chapter 1 verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which He was taken up, after that He, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom He had chosen, to whom also He showed Himself alive after His passion, by uh, the word passion means suffering, by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So, this is just an, a reminder also that when Jesus, after Jesus died on the cross, He rose from the grave. The proof of that was that He was visibly seen by human beings. It wasn't just something that He rose and has gone and no one has seen Him and so we don't know what happened. It wasn't a, a guess. It's not a, well, I hope so. No, the proof of the resurrection is found in that 
People saw him after his resurrection. He's reminding him, him here that he was seen, uh, uh, being seen of them 40 days, speaking the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He was reminding him of that. Look at verse 4. Being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, he, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Who's they? Who's this talking about? The disciples? Okay, so he's talking to them. Well, now that they're hearing what he's saying, and the disciples now are asking a question. They're talking back to him. They're asking this question. Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he saith unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then here's the purpose of a believer. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The purpose of the Christian is to point others to Christ. Are you doing that? This, for me personally in my life, is very convicting. Because I ask myself, am I doing that? When's the last time you talked to someone about the Lord? After all, we have... The Holy Spirit living in our heart. Again, this is to Christians, believers. We have the Holy Spirit living in our heart. We understand the power of salvation. We understand the mercy that we so greatly needed. We understand the love of God. Why? Because we recognized our own individual need. And we relinquished ourselves over to someone else being the Lord Jesus Christ and saying, Lord, I don't don't deserve you. I don't deserve heaven. But by faith, I'm going to trust you as my Savior. We relinquished our own self and our own desires and our own path of life to the Lord. So why don't we tell someone else? Well, pastor, we support missionaries. It's their job. We have evangelists like Brother Bill and Shirley Hall that has gone out for years and years. It's their job to tell others. I don't see that in Scripture there's a specific person that God is talking to to tell others about Christ. Do you? Is it a specific person, a specific calling? Or is it for every Christian to tell others about the Lord? About what He's done? About His love for them? About the finished work on the cross? It's been done for us. So I want to look at this tonight. I hope this is a... Hope I'm clear and understandable in this. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help me tonight. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, I have failed you in this area of my life. There's people that I know that may go to hell. And it may be because I've never shared your love with them. Lord, help me not to be afraid to strike up a conversation. Help me to not be so busy. Help me to not forget. Lord, help me to keep my purpose for living in the front of my mind as a Christian. Lord, help me to preach your word tonight and work in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. The gospel What's the word gospel mean? Good news.
How many of you like good news? Oh, I love good news. You, you know, I, I, whenever your, your spouse comes in and they say something like this, all right, I got something to tell you. My first question is, is it good news or bad news? Because if it's bad news, I've got to go mow. I've got to go clean the gutters. Something. I love good news, all right? In fact, if someone, if you ever come up to me and say this, if you ever come up to me and say, all right, I've got good news and bad news, I promise you're going to hear this statement. I want the bad news first because I want to follow it up with something good. I love good news. Aren't you thankful that we have the good news that we don't have to die and go to hell? Not one person that you work with, live beside, know, play ball with, not one person has to go to hell. Jesus Christ died for them. We have the good news. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. If you want the plan of salvation gift-wrapped in one verse, there it is. He died for our sins. According to the Scriptures, that's the Bible, that's what our foundation is, that's what we go back to as proof of what He did. He was buried, meaning He actually did die. He conquered death and He rose the third day, again, based upon the Scripture, according to the Scriptures. What a great verse. What a great reminder for us. Romans chapter 4, verse 25, "...who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification." That word delivered means to de- was delivered, uh, to be delivered up treacherously or by betrayal to cause one to be taken." In Romans chapter 4, verse 25, it's reminded to us who was delivered for our offenses. He wasn't delivered as though they ju- he just, Jesus Christ just walked out and was delivered. No, it was completely by betrayal. Jesus Christ did not deserve to die. He, he, did, he did nothing wrong. He's God in flesh. There was no fault found in Him. He was delivered treacherously, ruthlessly. The word justification means the act by God to declare, to declare men to be free from the penalty of sin by forgiveness. Justification. I love that. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. You know, there's many Christians that might, uh, there's many people that will argue that will differ on people going to heaven. There's some people believe that just because uh, you're alive, you're going to go to heaven. Uh, you, we're all going to go to heaven, but we're going to get there in different ways. Uh, I, I had a conversation many years ago with, uh, I think it was a Jehovah's Witness that came to our house and he knocked and he talked and he went on. I let him talk, was very kind. By the way, always be kind and, uh, to anyone like that because you are, are a representative of our Lord Jesus Christ as well. And I let him talk. And I, I would use Scripture to prove to them what they were saying and what I was saying. And at the very end, and I've said this before, but at the very end, he did this. <sighs> okay, I'll just tell you. Everyone's going to heaven. And I said, really? Everyone's going to heaven? Yeah, everyone's going to heaven. I said, then why are you out here? Well, I appreciate the time talking with you, and we've got to go. There's people that will differ on heaven and how to get there. We go back to truth. What's the purpose of, one of the purposes of being a Christian? Is to tell others, we see here in Acts, be witnesses unto me. Everywhere, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part. The, 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 the purpose of being a Christian is to be a witness, to share, to be an ambassador. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. We are to be ambassadors, to go on behalf of So I want to look at this idea on being an ambassador, being a witness. 
The first reason why we can be a witness for Christ is that we have the right message to tell. We have the right message to tell. Verse 8, And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Unto me. This throughout history has not changed. The right message is not a message of goodness. It's not a message of the religion of whatever country that people are living in. Well, Jimmy and Miss Tracy are here. They're missionaries in Nepal. God isn't probably talked about very much. The Lord Jesus Christ probably isn't talked about, about very much among the people that live there. You go to Thailand, we go to Africa, we go to uh, uh, play, uh, Catholicism is rampant all over the world. It's a, it's a big religion. Let me say this. The right message is only a message about the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross to save us for our sins. That's the only message. That's the only gospel. It has nothing to do with anything the world says or what a religion says. It has everything to do with what God in His Word says. Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, finish it with me, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believeth unto righteousness, for the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have the right message to give. It's a message of the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross for you and for me. Remember Acts chapter 16? The Roman jailer. Remember that story? Paul and Silas are in jail. They've been beaten. They're thrown into jail. Acts chapter 16 and verse 31. Actually, I'm going to back up to 26. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. The shackles, they all fell off. The keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice. He yelled at him and he said, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And very simply they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. The message that we have is for anyone, for anywhere, in any location, at any time of our Country's history, our nation, our, our, the world history from present to future. Here's another great thing about the message. Not only is it the right message, it's the only message that will ever suffice a holy God. It will, it's the only message. It doesn't matter if the Lord tarries and waits another thousand years. Can you imagine all that's been brought to man's mind of something to worship in the last thousand years? Imagine what it would be the next thousand years. And know this, the only message is the same message of Jesus dying on the cross for them. Part of our purpose of being a believer is to be a witness, and we can do that because we have the right message. And here it is, John 14, 6. I, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Pastor, listen, I'm saved. I've trusted Christ as my Savior. Why are you telling me this? I already know all this. I don't have to get saved again. I know Jesus Christ died on the cross. I know that He conquered death and He rose the third day. And back so and so time ago, I trusted Him as my Savior. I'm going to heaven. Why are you telling me this? Because I want us to have confidence as a Christian knowing that we have the right message to tell. Don't be fearful of telling the truth. 
Don't be worried about what someone else might think or what someone else might believe. You're telling the truth. Share the good news. Share God's Word and step back and let God do the work in the heart. Pastor, I've been praying for so-and-so for so many years. You have no idea. Don't stop praying and don't stop speaking to them about Jesus Christ. Because God will work in hearts according to His will. People ultimately have to make the choice and they will live with the consequence of their choice. But we have the right message to tell. Very simply, the next we see here, be witnesses unto me. The word witness there uh, has a word, uh, martus, and it refers to those who bear witness to the truth. It came to be used by those who, who bore the ultimate witness to the truth or they were martyred for even the truth. You know, there's people all over the world that, whose life has been taken just by simply from being a Christian. Can you imagine? Can you imagine someone hating you so much just simply for you believing in God that they would want to take your life? Can you imagine that? The word witness, not only do we have the right message, but we are to have the right method, and that's simply to be a witness, to speak the truth. There are some that would try to use maybe a world's model, a world's method to try to blend the truth with worldly things, maybe worldly music, maybe worldly whatever, and they try to tell the truth with worldly things. Listen, let's do right by God in speaking the truth the right way. With kindness and with love. The message, very simply, is, is to be a witness. There are some that, that they gave their life for what they believed in. You want to talk about making a statement? You want to talk about something that was so visible and such a reminder of, <clears throat> excuse me, of the love that God has for them and the love that they had for God, that they gave their life? Let me ask you, if it came down to it, would you give your life for God? That's a hard question to answer, I understand. And I don't know that I could answer it We're standing here right here comfortably in the, the nice auditorium that we have at Central Baptist Church. But what if that happened? There's people all over the world right now that's given their life just because they're a Christian. But yet many times we are nervous about going to someone close to us right here in the comfort of America. Do you know that God loves you? Do you know that God loves you? Tell someone. Do you know that God loves them? Tell someone. Do you know that you are forgiven? Tell someone. Do you know that God saves sinners? Then tell someone. Acts chapter 26. If you'll flip over just a few pages to Acts chapter 26. This is Paul standing before King Agrippa. Acts chapter 26 verse 1, And then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. Can you imagine Paul given the opportunity to speak for himself in front of King Agrippa? Imagine what that must have sounded like. Here's what he said. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, 
which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests when they were put to death. I gave my voice against them, and I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities." Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when they were fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he answered, or and he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I appear unto thee. I will appear unto thee. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto, the, unto them of Damascus and to Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to, Gen, to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For this causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things that those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that, the, and that He should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Paul was telling, stand, standing before King Agrippa and he laid out his whole testimony. Very simply, he just used the right method in telling those around him what he did in his own life. Pastor, I have people that I would like to tell. What do I say? Tell them what happened to you. Which goes back to we should be living a life that's putting others to Christ. Because if you're talking to someone about the Lord and you have a grumpy attitude and you're always complaining, and you're mad all the time, and you're talking about everyone, and you live like the world, and you maybe have language that shouldn't uh, come out of your mouth, then when you say, oh, let me tell you what God did in my heart, what do you think they're going to say? If that's what a Christian is, no thank you. So what did King Agrippa say? Paul laid out his whole testimony so what was the response, 24? And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make, me, make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, and listen to his words. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up and the governor Bernice, Bernice, and they sat with him and they were gone aside. They talked between themselves saying, This man doth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. 
We have the right message to give. The method is just tell them what God did in your life. Just speak, tell them, be a witness. Tell others what He did for you. And then lastly, we should have the right mindset. One of the purposes of being a Christian is to tell others about Christ. We have the message to give. Are you just going to tell? Are you you're going to tell the message? The method is just to do it. Tell Christ, tell others about what Christ did in your heart. You don't have to worry about the what the world uses and just tell them what Jesus did in your life. But we also must have the right mindset. The witness in a court of law is to testify to the judge and the jury. The witness to Jesus Christ is to testify to the whole world what Jesus has done. The right mindset is this. As we see here back in Acts chapter 1, the right mindset is, I want to tell anyone and everyone. But anyone and everyone will never happen if you don't first tell someone. There may be some in the room that, you, that you've been saved for years. And maybe there's some of you that have never told one person about Jesus Christ. Would you commit to telling someone? You see here in verse 8, Acts chapter 1, ye shall be witnesses unto me. And then here it is. There's no limits both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. We must be willing and desiring to tell the message. It is sad that many Christians will not tell one person about the Lord. Some of that might be because they don't have the right mindset. Well, that's pastor's job. That's the, the church staff's job. That's the evangelist's job. That's the missionary's job. That's someone else. But what I see all throughout Scripture is that is the job, if you want to use that word, it's the responsibility, it's the purpose of every Christian. Tonight, will you purpose in your heart to tell one person this week about Christ? Just plant the seed. Plant the seed. Many in here have gardens. You'll never reap the harvest of the garden, the vegetables, the fruit, until you first plant a seed. Plant a seed in someone's heart, in someone's life. Let God do all the work. He's done the work on the cross we are just to be witnesses, willing tools to share Christ, to live our life pointing others to Christ, but being a witness and sharing Christ with others. Tonight, the focus of the message is this. In understanding our purpose in being a Christian, here's the application. Will you do it? Will you tell one person, talk to one friend, one family member, one co-worker, this week in seven days, will you tell one of what the Lord Jesus Christ did in your life? Let's pray. Lord, thank you that the work has already been done. Thank you for even the example that we read about Paul, in standing before King Agrippa, he laid out his life's testimony. He was so bad. He didn't deserve God's goodness. He even made it miserable and even threw men and women in prison and even ultimately taking the lives of some just because they were a Christian. And then, Lord, you worked in a heart, in his heart. Lord, thank you that the work has already been done. Lord, I pray that you will put someone in our mind right now that we can tell about you this week. With heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe the Lord has put someone in your mind that you need to commit. Say, Lord, if you will give me an opportunity, I'll take it. 
and I will tell them what you did in my life. With heads bowed and eyes closed, let's all stand. I just want tonight to use this time to pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to work in their heart as well as give you an opportunity to share Christ with someone. If you want to come to the front, you can. If you want to pray there at your seat, you may do so. But use this time right now to pray for one that you can tell the message to, the good news. Folks are praying. Lord, as a song that is being played, here am I, Lord, send me. Lord, I pray that you will send me and send all of us to the right one with the right heart that would accept the seed of salvation. Lord, we'll just give out the message and we'll let you do all of the work in the heart of conviction. And Lord, I pray that someone this week would come to know you as their Savior because of having the right mindset and giving out, being a witness to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 